presentation of uh, Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth. Okay, so the creator of this documentary, it was, it was a documentary that was produced in 2006 based off of a presentation that Al Gore gave. And the, this, this very person is responsible for a satellite that was launched on February 11th. He finally got his moment to shine uh, after this project was 20 years in the making. And it was finally sent into space. So, um, just a preview of points. Uh, I'm going to tell you who Al Gore is, uh, how this project came to be, and how does this thing work. Uh, first off, Al Gore is actually a former U.S. Vice President. He served in the Clinton administration from 1993 till 2001 and he was responsible for a lot of environmental activism. He's currently an environmental activist and um, was responsible for the presentation of an inconvenient truth. Um, this project started back in the 1990s. This project was a, was a project 20 years in the making when he decided to create a satellite called Triana that would be sent into space and send back a live continuous feed of the Earth. But Congress didn't really like that idea a whole lot. It was quoted as a multi-million dollar screensaver. And um, according to USA Today, um, Congress repeatedly tried to kill it and NASA stashed it in a warehouse. And in addition to that, there were a lot of problems with design, there were too many satellites that were going to go up into space at the time, and it just got backed up. So, poor Mr. Gore, he didn't know what to do until 2008 when the satellite ACE, Advanced Composition Explorer, was retired due to outdated equipment and advanced age. So, NASA pulled the workings of DISCOVER the acronyms, Deep Space Climate Observatory, back out of storage, and thus, Discover was born. So after receiving the green light from, the green light from officials in 2008, uh, the mission was reborn, and uh, with the prime mission of looking at, uh, refocusing on the sun. So this contraption, is supposed to. What's the next slide? Um, the satellite is meant to have a look at the sun and monitor the sun's activity from a safe distance, allowing the satellite to connect, collect data and send back warnings of potential solar storms. Solar storms, as you can see here, are um, storms of radiation and charged particles that are released from the sun that can cause damage to all kinds of things here on Earth. They can take out satellites. It was responsible for an event back in the 1800s where it completely fried a telegraph line that stretched the United States. So the satellite would send back data uh, warning us up to an hour in advance of one of these storms, and it would also provide readings of the Earth's climate patterns and vegetation to provide better climate models. So, in conclusion, this satellite was finally launched on February 11th, and um, that's it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Questions for Alex? Questions. Alex, why do you think the inconvenient truth and all of this was put on the back burner and then all of a sudden it exploded? Al Gore was being interviewed. It was a movie that hit the theaters and it became a big deal. I think it was a political thing because back in the time that he was trying to get this satellite launched, 
there was a lot of political turmoil, he was running for president, and they thought that his intents were a little murky. So they kind of put it on the back burner until it was able to be revived. Mur murky as uh, an environmentalist? They, murky, murky as a political, as in a political way. Uh, they thought that he was using this technology to get ahead, or it was it was a concern that he could be using this technology to get ahead in the political arena. Any other questions, Alex? So was this it was used for scientific research yeah. or okay. sun? Yes, it's uh, it's used for examining the sun's patterns to watch for the solar storms that will come because solar flares are very dangerous or can be potentially dangerous because they can wipe out GPS, they can interfere with um, airplane communications, they can uh, take out cell phone or they can make cell phones unusable and uh, another purpose that it will serve is to watch the earth and provide ac more accurate climate models. How often does a solar flare occur? Um, lately, there have been a few, I mean, they can, it, it just ranges on the sun's activity. Sometimes there will be several in a, in a multi-month period, and sometimes there won't be any for a decade. So kind of like volcano eruptions. Essentially. It's a good thing. <laughs> it is a good thing. We see yes, thumbs up. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yes, yeah, go. Any other questions? Let's let's get Alex a warm round of applause. Thank you. I believe you can.